Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the 51st episode of the Sira Stories from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the last episode, we covered the marriage of Zainab bint Jahash with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, let's go back to the social events of the Sira. Today, inshallah, we will look into the next major incident that occurred in the fifth year of the Hijrah. It was the expedition of al muraisi or Banu Al-Mustaliq. Both the names are given. Banu Al-Mustaliq was the name of the tribe. They lived at a pond called Muraisi. They lived next to this water pool between Makkah and Medina, to the south of Medina. They had one of the most prominent idols of Arabia. It was called Manat. Just for you to note here that Allat, Uzza and Manat are the three main idols mentioned in the Quran. Now let's find out why did the tribe of Banu al-Mustaliq wanted to attack the Muslims. The tribe of Banu al-Mustaliq had an alliance with Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the days of Jahiliya. So when the Quraysh attacked Medina, the Banu al-Mustaliq sided with the Quraysh against the Muslims. They helped them in the battle of Uhud against the Muslims. Furthermore, their location was very useful for the Quraysh. It was a safety zone for the Quraysh which was closer to Medina, only a day or two's journey away. Let's see when this expedition occurred. It's a theoretical difference, a historical question, although it doesn't really change things. The two major positions are 5th year and the 6th year. Scholars differ regarding the date of the battle. Some said that it took place during the month of Shaban in the sixth year after Hijra. Others said that it took place during the month of Shaban in the fourth year after Hijra. And a third group of the scholars are of the view that it took place during the month of Shaban in the fifth year after Hijra. Now, after the Muslims' defeat at the Battle of Uhud, the news came that the leader of Banu al-Mustaliq, named Al-Harith ibn Abi Dirar, wanted to launch a surprise attack on the Muslims. Because, just like other small tribes, they were having the economic damage from the tensions that were going on between the Muslims and the Quraysh. When the Prophet ﷺ heard of this plan, the first thing he did was to confirm the rumor. So he sent a Sahabi named Buraida ibn al husayb who asked Al-Harith ibn Abi Dinar, I've heard you are launching an attack against the Muslims. I want to join so I can get a share of the war booty. This was a trick and Buraida was a warrior so Al-Harith happily permitted him to join them. During that night, Buraida escaped to confirm to the Prophet ﷺ the enemy's plan while Al-Harith had no clue about it. Therefore, when the Muslims launched an attack with 700 soldiers on the Banu al-Mustaliq, it was a complete shock for them. Muslim won over them. Another notable point is that the hypocrites did join the Muslims in this invasion because they knew that it wouldn't be a big battle as Banu Mustaliq was a small tribe and the chances of winning were obvious. Thus, for this battle, they volunteered, including Abdullah ibn Ubay, even though they were all absent from the Battle of Badr and the Battle of Uhud. However, a number of things happened after the battle due to the presence of the hypocrites. The Prophet ﷺ left Medina and attacked the Banu al-Mustaliq right after Fajr. They were so unprepared that the women were collecting the water, children going outside to play, etc. And when they saw the Muslims were coming, they almost immediately surrendered. The bulk of the tribe, over 2,000 camels, 5,000 sheep, and 1,000 people were taken prisoner of war. 
Most of them were women and children. Only a handful of the Banu Mustaliq died. As for the Muslims, there was not a single casualty except for one accidental misfiring. One of the Ansar mistakenly took a muhajir named Hisham ibn Subaba for an enemy and killed him. Hisham had a brother in Mecca named Miqyas ibn Subaba. When Miqyas heard his brother had been killed, he pretended to revert to Islam to trick the Prophet ﷺ and other Muslims. Then he reached Medina and demanded the blood money of a hundred camels. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him blood money as this was a legal Islamic matter. But the same night, Miqyas killed the Ansari who had killed his brother and then took the camels and fled back to Mecca. And that was not good. The battle with the tribe of Banu al-Mustaliq was a massive victory for the Muslims with very minimal effort and fighting. The story of Banu al-Mustaliq does not hold much significance for the battle. Rather, the events that happened after the battle hold much importance. The three things that happened after the battle were number one, the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha which is also called the incident of ifk and number two the marriage of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to jawariya bint al harith radiyallahu anha inshallah this will be covered in our next episode and number three the revelation of surah al munafiqun the two of the above three incidents involved the return journey of the muraisi to medina as i mentioned earlier the hypocrites joined the Muslim army for this battle. So they played a bigger role in the slandering of Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And due to their evil activities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them in the Surah Al-Munafiqoon as well. So today we stop here at this point. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel Zil Noreen. Until next time, Jazakallahu khair and assalamu alaikum. Uh.